everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Heather Lindsay and today I'm talking about being a first generation preacher. Now, to be honest with you, when God told me that I was going to preach in 2003, um, I was a little surprised. I remember sitting there in my small bedroom in Washington DC when I was there for an internship and the Lord said to me, you're gonna preach the gospel of Jesus. Millions of people are gonna come into the knowledge of who I am through the ministry. You'll travel all over the world and you'll share Christ. And I'm like, yes, that's so exciting. But then he also said, you're not gonna see it for about nine years. Well, all right, then what am I then what am I supposed to do? It's almost like, I know I'm called to do this thing, but I don't know anybody else that's doing it. I don't have the hookup. My, you know, I'm first generation. My parents were not in ministry whatsoever. Um, then I met my husband. And his parents aren't in ministry either, but he also believed he was called to ministry. So we're first generation. And we have literally built our ministries from the ground up. The beautiful thing about it is when God calls us, when we're in our mother's womb in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he completes the work that he starts in us. So yes, it's hard. Yes, we've probably had to put more work into it than, I'm not saying somebody else that hasn't, but it would have been nice along the way to pick up the phone and call, you know, my mama say she's a preacher for 20 years and say, hey, how do I go about this? And we've actually had to go through tons of trial and error along the way to do it. So if God has called you to do something specific in your first generation, maybe first generation doctor, nurse, whatever the case is, or business owner, then you're gonna to have to do tons of research. You have to be very intentional with your time. You have to be very disciplined with your time. You have to be very faithful wherever God has placed you right now because he's preparing you and teaching you and, and training you so you can do what you've been called to do. You'll have, you'll mess up a lot. And um, I prayed for a mentor, a woman in ministry to help me along the way. But did God send one? No, he did not send one to me um, for about 14 years. and. He, he told me this, he said, Heather, where I'm taking you, no mentor has gone. And now, and I understand because I feel like if I would have had a mentor, I would have called them every five minutes. Hey, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? I, had, I used to have a very like clingy, dependent attitude and I felt like God had to break me from that. So I would learn to trust in the Holy Spirit and not trust in how I felt that day or, mm -hmm. oh, I just need help. And it's almost like, I would have depended on the mentor for the wrong things. And I didn't need a mentor, I needed the Holy Spirit. So even to this day, I mean, now God has surrounded me with amazing mentors and women and ministry and different things like that. But they're not my God. I don't like run to them like, what do I do about life? I'm so used to running to the feet of the Holy Spirit. I just like, I'm like, God, lead me, guide me. And then I go to them for wisdom, obviously here and there, but um, I'm thankful for this journey. Yes, it's been hard. Even when we planted our church, um, just getting legal paperwork. I mean, that's the first place to start. If you know God has called you to do something in ministry. I mean, going on LegalZoom and getting my trademark for Pinky Promise and just doing certain things. Those are things I didn't know about, but I've had to learn along the way. I've had to research. I've had to read books about, you know, marketing, about starting a business. I listen to podcasts. I listen to um, YouTube videos. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly reading books because Again, I'm first generation. We've had our church for five years now and it's so exciting and it's amazing. It's in Atlanta, Georgia. But again, we've had to learn. We've gotten burned along the way and it's been hard, but it's so worth it because although you might be first generation, you have to remember that if God is leading you to do it, he's gonna provide for you. He's gonna take care of you. He's gonna bring the right people. He's gonna send the right help. Granted, it might be hard at times. You might not understand at times, but guess what? In James 1, it says, if you lack wisdom, ask God and he'll give it to you. So I'm telling you, God will give you wisdom. He'll show you what to do. He'll lead you along the right path. So just step out on faith. If he's telling you to do it, do what you know to do in the natural. And he will provide and he will take care of you. So if you're first generation to anything, then I wish we could like group hug because I understand. But the, uh, another awesome thing is now I get to pave the way for Logan and Taylor. Now they're not going to have to go through everything that I went through. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that my seed does not have to experience how hard it was for my husband and I to go into ministry. And I'm glad that I can be that mouth to speak into Taylor about starting a women's ministry or preaching if she wants to or whatever God has called our babies to do. So I hope this has been encouraging to you. And I know it's hard and I know um, you might feel like at times that you're a failure or you've missed God, because I definitely have felt that before. But just keep going, keep going. Just keep going. Don't give up. Trust in the Lord. Remember, he finishes what he starts. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. <laughs>